I'd rather be healthy and sure than have really good Are you sure? Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Freethinkers podcast that's also a video in louder volume. My name is Red. I'm Pepe. And I'm Margie. So today we're talking about two things. The first one being raising the salaries of politicians to prevent them from stealing money from our, us, the taxpayers. And the second is internet justice, posting pictures and other things online to shame people who do bad things in real life. So let's start with the first one. This was, of course, first brought up by Miriam Santiago, or at least recently she was the one who brought this up. She says that to prevent politicians from having to, from being tempted to steal from the coffers of the public, we should just raise their salary so that it would be enough and they wouldn't need to steal money from us anymore. Do you think that's a good idea? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not? Okay, because, let's start with you. Okay, the fact that they reached these amounts means that what they're getting from uh, the coffers is way more than what people need to survive. Parang, you don't get two millions and millions of pesos just in order to survive. Diba? You don't need that much money. No. So it's clearly a blatant disregard for you know, what, what other people need. And like, oh, mine, mine, mine. No, I think that, see Miriam, diba? she said that um, raise the salary so they can live in luxury, parin. I mean, relative luxury. Mm. But the thing is, I mean, 200 million is still <laughs> excessive. Um, you can still live a very comfortable life, like not just survive, but have a pretty, a fairly good life. But I mean, 200 million is way too much, even for that. Okay, I'll try to play the devil's advocate again. Uh, let's, Red. let's, because uh, we all agree. I, I also do not think that we should raise their salaries. I actually don't think we should pay them any salaries, but more on that later. So <laughs> I'll just say why. It could be a good reason for a lot of people. As like, I, like I said, I'm playing the devil's advocate here. Let's say you beautify certain monuments to, to add prestige to the Philippines when, you know, when people visit and all that. Like, would it be the same when you let these people who represent our country, they go to other places, you know, you want them to, to be dressed up nicely. You want them to be riding decent cars. And you want them to be living in a good place so that when they invite, let's say, foreign dignitaries to their place, they're not ashamed. And they, you know, the, we, we give off that impression that the Philippines is not a third world country and, you know, we can pay some people this much. Well, I mean, your argument brings um, to mind this South American uh, politician who's proud of uh, commuting to work mm, yeah. and who, I, I forget who said it. But yeah, he yeah. said something about um, the measure of a, of, of a truly rich or prosperous nation or a developed nation is a nation where even the richest people and politicians and all that are uh, willingly commute and willingly like um, just be among everybody else. The constituents. Yeah, because uh, um, now I'm playing the, the rational person instead of the devil's oh, advocate. thank God. Okay. If they're going to represent... The, you know, they are our representatives. If they're going to represent us, they should represent the least among us, or at yeah. least the majority. They should at least be average. Now, what's the, what's the idea with politicians having to live in luxury when everyone else, or majority of the population, can't even yeah. like, uh, bring food to the table? Like, feed a family on minimum wage. Yeah. Like, if I were a politician from a more developed country, and I met with someone from a less developed country, and I could see that they're they're like really prosperous, like they drive fancy cars and all that. But I know full well that their constituents are like mired in poverty. Then I I mean if I were if I had any semblance of logic, I would think that there was something wrong with that. What was that issue before about you know making like covering the the squatters areas and uh, yeah the were, informal were, settlers? Yeah. In, in, what was the issue with that? Yeah, I think there were initiatives to have um, the homes of informal settlers um, covered with um, walls that were decorated uh, with 
new paint. And yeah, that. yeah. I think this is the MBA, I think, but yeah, rich politicians remind me of that. They're, they're <laughs> kind of they're kind of a lie. They do not yeah. reflect the the actual state of a country. It's like who set up this system where, however poor a country is, the the politicians should always be a lot richer. Like who set up that system? I don't like it, and I think that we should consider the opposite. It's a it's a common thing. I've seen it several times posted in Facebook and I agree, like give politicians minimum wage and yeah. see how fast, fast that minimum wage goes up. Yeah. And like it, it's not um, common practice. I mean in for example in Japan, a lot of high ranking officials um, are very humble in the way that they, they conduct themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so another argument I'm playing the devil's advocate again of again, I do not think their salaries should be raised, is that Raising the salaries will attract talent. You know, if you want to attract educated and talented people, you make the salaries that of you know the same that you would pay professionals in any field. Mm -hmm. So raising the salaries like attracts talent. Like instead of going to maybe another country or another industry, they consider politics now. Do you think that's a that's a fair argument? That it attracts talent. That's yeah. That's uh, that's one of the arguments used by by the people who want salaries for politicians to be raised. Like let's say if you set the the, the salaries low, you will only attract people with not enough talent. Like like raising the talent makes the the pool that much more elite. I well, think is like, that a, yeah. Okay, sure. It's tr but it's tricky with politics because the talent that you need to succeed in politics is being able to lie through your teeth mm. <laughs> like, I mean if, if you if you're able to do that yeah. well, you're still gonna end up with the horrible people on top yeah and then I don't think I'm countering this argument myself <laughs> now I'm playing the rational person again that there's a correlation with you know sa salaries or whatever benefits that you give with the, the ability to be a good politician yeah. And I would much rather that I um, had a politician that wanted sincerely to mm. work in order to make the country better rather than just because it got more, he got more yeah. money because of it. Yeah, I think that uh, a politician should be someone who really wants to serve the country in spite of material gain. Yes. Like it's a very romantic yeah. idea. But if we ensure that politicians only receive the minimum, we can see that who really is there to to help the country or to make a profit. Yeah. I think it's a concession to the selfishness yeah. of politicians when you you accept the fact that they want to make a return on their investment. Because yeah. you know when they when they run for for office, they do spend a lot of money, and it becomes a contest now. It's a popularity contest and. The, the most popular person is usually the most powerful, the most rich, and that has nothing to do with being a good public servant. And it, it, it reminds me of this um, talk that I heard, heard. It says that the best way to um, spend money on employees is to give them just enough so that their minds are not on the money and their mm -hmm. minds are on the work. So yeah. give them just enough so that they can live uh, a proper life a decent yeah. life yeah. so that they can focus on the work and the studies are consistent even a um, monetary incentives for better performance they break down when your work is when your work requires um, a lot of um, cognitive processing yeah. a lot of engagement yeah. and that's that's true for politics in yeah. politics you have to um, in, to talk to a lot of people you have to take uh, a lot of factors into consideration when making policies yeah so if you Put a lot of money yeah. to incentivize that. Um, studies show performance actually goes down. I think I read about the same study. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was Khan or K O A H N or something like that. And it's true. If the if the work is routine, if it's just you know making walls, yeah. you you could increase the yeah. salary and incentivize it that way, and they would be more productive. But if it's creative work, such as legislating, yeah. I would assume. It is creative work, then giving more money actually detracts yeah. from the productivity in that regard. So, any final words on this topic? Oh, so, we're all in, we're on consensus here. I think it, it's a bad idea. Yeah. Um, any final words? 
No. <laughs> so our next topic is now internet justice. You know what I'm talking about. There would be, let's say, pictures of these SUVs parked in a very improper way. Like they're occupying two spaces. And someone takes a picture of that with, of course, the, the plate number, posts it on their wall, and it goes viral. Like everybody suddenly shares it hundreds of times, likes it, like comments on it. And this person now is, a, is an internet celebrity in a bad way. So do you think internet justice like this is a good idea? Is it ethical? Is it moral? What do you think? Um, I think it's a, phenom it's a relatively new phenomenon because, of course, the internet is pretty new. Um, and I think um, it could stand more um, prudence on the part of the people who are posting and mm -hmm. liking and sharing because um, uh, we have studies that show we do not behave the same way in person as we do online. That uh, the, the distance and the absence of an actual target or audience mm. makes us say things that we normally would not. So once we take that into, once a lot of people know that, that might help improve our, you know, how we behave online. Yeah, I read recently about this study conducted in China, I think, that the internet does not make us dumb, it makes us more angry. So, you see that in public, you see this person that you think is an asshole or a dick or whatever, and the moment you sit in front of your monitor and start typing, you already automatically, I think, become a different person. You're more angry, you post it now, and you don't think of the consequences. Maybe sometimes you, you even embellish the story about how this person wasn't supposed to be parked this way or that. And you, you spread it and you, you feel a release. And it's not, like, it's not like you don't see this person being hurt or being affected by your actions. But who knows, when, when somebody sees that SUV, maybe recognizes the plate number, I, I don't think that's going <laughs> to happen. But let's just say, for the sake yeah. of argument, that that person maybe does something to the tires or, the, or scratches it with a coin. I don't know, these could be the, some of the negative, negative consequences of such internet justice. What do you think? Well, um, on the other end, I think that it's good that people are being more vigilant mm. about certain things. Like, usually we give the blind eye to people who park awfully mm. or who park in, for example, in, uh, what do you call this, uh, handicapped person's yeah. spaces. I would think that um, if people were more conscious of um, the internet, like uh, seeing people do stuff like that, like break the rules, um, they'd be more uh, conscientious. Um, because I, I really wouldn't want people parking in the handicap space um, if they weren't. Yeah, I, I read somewhere that gossip is the way that society corrects itself, yeah. you know, that it monitors itself. And the internet is really gossip several times yeah. Yeah. Uh, magnified. magnified. magnified yeah. So. Again, I think that the concern is whether the, the thing that's being posted and being reacted and shared is actually true. Because I, I remember instances where internet justice like this is actually bullying already. There's this uh, example of this person. Somebody posted that he was spreading HIV. You're, you remember mm, this? Yeah, yeah. This, uh, yeah. There was a picture of him and a, a graphic was made with a supposed statement from the AIDS society or something like that and he was intentionally spreading the virus and of course this was not true the the person actually went and get got tested and was certified that he was negative he posted the results but still he had all of that stress because of this people who posted online and people are just too ready to believe anything that's online is there a is there a rule for this i'm sometimes guilty of it myself I don't check other sources, I don't go to Snopes, I don't give a second thought to it before sharing, and I think it, it goes with the campaign of think before you click. Yeah. I mean, I think that that problem goes beyond just um, internet justice. It's mm. the internet in general, mm. just putting anything out there. You have to be able to discern whether this is true or not, or at least know how to figure out like whether this is true or not. So I think what's more important is educating everyone to be more uh, alert 
mm. and to know the right sources. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. I think it's a. Uh, there are limits to it. Like if it's uh, something that's done against the public, you know, the public good, mm -hmm. like you know, parking in a bad way, you know, that affects everyone. Then, then sure, maybe post that and make it a cautionary example. Yeah. Maybe people will think twice about parking not in the in the right way next mm -hmm. time because of that. But if it's something that only affects you personally and it's between the two of you, then send it as a private message. You yeah. don't need to actually shame Anymore. the person when it's something personal. Uh, any final words about this topic, internet justice? No, I think it's something interesting. I mean, looking at it from the perspective of um, how recent it is. Because uh, humans really were not prepared for the phenomenon of the internet. Mm. Like, yes. for... For most of our history, we've been living in a small tribe. Actually, huge societies in general, we, we really were not prepared for this yeah. Uh, yeah. psychologically. So this this giant gossip uh, web called the internet is an interesting thing to study. Yeah, I think it could be a, a good thing because internet justice, when it's meted out to the people who really deserve it, like mm -hmm. corrupt politicians, yeah. for example. Of course, there are instances where, let's say, the criticisms on Pinoy, for instance. I've seen some legitimate criticisms as well as those that are unfounded. Mm -hmm. And you have to be fair and you have to do your research as well. Of course, the internet makes everything so fast. So instead of just believing everything that you see, use that save time to actually do more research. research. Like find an, a source or two to, that corroborates the, the thing before believing it. And, be, and of course, more so if you intend to share it, do check first uh, and that, that, that's it, I guess. Yeah, um, if you want to chastise something or someone, um, think about whether uh, it, it's doing so will be beneficial to everyone or to just to yourself. Mm. Because if it's just to yourself, then you might as well just do it privately. And think also if the thing were done to you. Maybe yeah. that's, you know, the golden or the platinum yeah. rule or whatever. So How would you feel if you were the receiving end? Yes, yes. And Snopes is your friend, by the way. Snopes is your friend. There's a link here. <laughs> so, sorry for the extra work, Gary. <laughs> and thank you for watching this episode. See you next time. <laughs>